So this is where these trips can take a wrong turn. If you look over on the right side of this map, I'm at the McDougal hunting camp. And um, what a disaster. You know, I thought up here in the National Forest that we'd be off the beaten trail. Now there's some other camping areas, but I ran out of daylight. It took a lot longer to get here than what I thought. There was some traffic in Alabama. I had to go through some, some cities there, which I was trying to avoid. But, you know, if you're going to make any time at all on the road. So this is what it looks like, you know. And this is good. I mean, you got the vaulted toilet, which is what I expected for a hunting camp. But, you know, I, I, I don't get these national forests. You know, this is a national forest campground. These are our tax dollars. Not even a picnic table in here. And you, you wouldn't believe when you're camping how much a picnic table means, you know, for, for putting stuff away and, and uh, you know, putting stuff out and whatnot. I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even unpacking the car. The cooler's just staying in the car. You know, screw that. There's, there's, there we go. And uh, it's right off, oh, this is, what a disaster. This reminds me of a trip at the New River Gorge when I was, uh, you know, um, camping and uh, I was free camping. I thought, oh, this would be great. So I get down to this camping area. It was, once again, it was late. So I had to go with the campsite and there was a train track right across the river. Oh my God. The trains ran all night long. You couldn't, I don't think I got a wink of sleep, man. It was just horrible. And I was like, why in the world would you put a campground right here? <laughs> I mean, it was on the river, but I mean, who cares? So there is a road back there, you probably can't see it. And I went down it a ways and I, uh, you know, there might be some better places to camp, but it turned into a muddy mess. And, you know, I don't have, that car's, you know, not a Jeep, you know, so I, it was, uh, there was some big holes, lots of water, and it would have turned the, um, the SUV into just a muddy, muddy mess. And listen to the car noise. This is what I'm gonna be putting up with all night long. You know, but I've got no choice. It's too late to get to any place else. And let me tell you, if you pull into a campground, even the National Forest Campground, where they've got a uh, camp host or any of that crap, and you start dealing with people and they're like, you know, they're looking at you like, well, why did you arrive so late? And we got to get all your paperwork done. We got we to gotta check you in, you know, and, and that's fine if it's three o'clock in the afternoon. But you know, when, you're, when it's getting dark and you got to set up your camp, you know, you're just like, look, can't we deal with this in the morning? You know, now nah, our rules are our rules, you know, and then so I, anyway, and I also, you know, you no way I'm safe here. I mean, this is redneck country and uh, I like rednecks. I'm a redneck too, but I mean, I've, I've had some, <laughs> I've had some run-ins with uh, a couple of them, you know, and uh, so if they decided to come back in here, I can't leave, you know, stuff laying in here. So literally what, what I'm doing is uh, I'm not even taking anything out of the, the vehicle and uh, or the SUV and we'll just pack up in the morning and uh, move on. Uh, basically what I'm going to look for is like a picnic shelter and that's where we'll have breakfast and there's some trails uh, nearby that look really good to hike uh, and we'll hit those trails tomorrow. Uh, and then if I can find another camping area, we might stay two more nights down here. It, it is still, I was hoping to get out of the heat. You know, down in Florida, what a beautiful, I mean, those air-conditioned bathrooms, oh my God, that was nice. Plus the running water and the electricity, you know, none of that here. I mean, if I'm going to rough it like this, camping, you know, backpacking, this is what you'd expect, you know, because how, how are they going to get picnic tables back in on some of these backpacking trails? And, uh, but when you're right off a road, a main road, I, I, I don't get it. But anyway, I guess that's enough for now. Just wanted to show you how a trip can turn into a disaster real, real quick. You know, it's only one night, but I'm not gonna get any sleep tonight. All that car is riding by. Anyway, at least the bathroom's clean. Uh, a lot of these vaulted toilets, you'd be surprised. You know, the only thing is that sometimes a spider gets down in there. <laughs> and I hate spiders. You see me talk about spiders this whole trip. And if one of them comes up out of there, you know, it's like, ah, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, anyway, that's the only thing that I, I fear when I get in the toilet. All right, man. Well, here we're here for the night. See you uh, tomorrow. So I forgot to record two more things. <laughs> man, I tell you, I don't know how I'm going to ever get all this video posted if it turns out okay. But uh, so last night, you know, I, I picked up my Cheetos 
you know, I showed you the fire and I'm all settled in and got everything ready. And, uh, you know, I had the bug netting on, thank God. And I told you those fire ants had bitten me. Uh, one of them, you know, and luckily it was just one. And uh, so I'm looking down, man, and there's ants all over me. I'm like, oh my God, you know. And so I'm jumping up and I'm dusting them off. Luckily, none of them got through the bug netting to bite me. That's why you wear the bug netting. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm opening up, you know, and I'm reaching down into the Cheetos and I just happened to see, it looked like the bag was crawling. Now I had two clothespins with that bag closed, but I stupid, I didn't know ants like Cheetos. That's a first for me. <laughs> well, I never, you know, I, I shouldn't have set them beside the chair. I probably, they probably should have been up in the chair or on top of the car, you know, just another, another FYI. So ants actually like Cheetos, who knew? The, uh, the other thing was I wanted to talk about, you know, overnight packing, uh, setting up the tent. You know, we got no picnic table here. And uh, so what you're going to want to do is you got to throw everything in the tent so that in the morning when you wake up, you can just roll everything up and put it in its bags, you know, and then you, you toss all that out. And then, of course, you got to do the tent on the ground. That's that's just a given. But see, without a picnic table, you know, you're going to want to do all that in the tent because you got, if you get out here and it's wet and it's damp in the morning, you know, you're going to, you're going to get everything nasty. So just a, just a little camping tip and, uh, but I had to get the ant story in. <laughs> Who knew? Ants like Cheetos. Oh my God. Talk to y'all later. All right. I lied. One more thing. It's getting really dark. So, but if you look at my tent, it's on a downslope here. Um, I didn't even put a ground cover underneath there because that's m that much less that I have to dry off and, and get packed. So, it, But if it does rain, if you really can't see it probably, but right here is a little channel where the water will flow, you know, pretty much underneath the car and, and go on that way. So most of the water coming this way is going to go that way. Now, some of the water is going to come in you know, and go underneath the tent, but I'm on a little bit of a downslope. I'll put my head, you know, obviously up, up a hill a little bit. And uh, so that's why there's no need for a ground cover. Just, uh, you know, whenever you get to wherever you're going, backpacking or, or camping, you know, your tent placement is, is critical. Now I understand at these campgrounds, a lot of times they got, they got no clue, you know, they just dig in these campsites and, and wherever you put your tent, it's either flat or it's, it's below, uh, everything else and it's it's stupid and, and you, if you got the campsite you're just screwed but uh, but you know when you're out like this and or backpacking you can always look for a good place to put the tent okay good night well I hope I look as tired as I feel so well, as you can see we're packing up the remnants of the camp the good news is the Rangers didn't come down in here and charge me money to for a night of no sleep the uh, trucks, I guess, man, I, maybe they were log haulers, but man, they came through. I was having flashbacks for the first time of the war when the C-130s, you know, would be out there and you're trying to take a nap or go to sleep because we were in a huge warehouse with, you know, 140 or 50 other soldiers, you know, and oh my God. So I'm going to try to find a place, uh, hopefully maybe with a shower. I mean, I, I hate to. To not rough it. I mean, the point of the trip was to rough it, but, uh, well, I roughed it last night. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you on the flip side. So I guess the horror story of this campsite will not come to Because I almost walked into this little guy. I got to get an up shot, close shot here. Try not to disturb him. There he is. Man, oh man, I almost had a face full of that guy. Oh, you want to talk about me screaming and running? It would have been quite a sight. But that's him. Well, I'll have to look him up on the internet to see what that is. I hope he ain't poisonous. Huh. That's scary. 